All right, welcome back to uh, FaceTime with you. Uh, we've got a very exciting guest uh, with us. He's very excited, actually, because he's going to be doing something very exciting. Now, uh, we have Ken Golden here. He is our professor of mathematics and adjunct professor of bioengineering, which means you went to a lot of school. <laughs> that's, that's very impressive. Very Not impressive as much as it sounds, though. <laughs> well, and, well. Speaking of impressive, though, uh, you work here in the mathematics department, obviously, but you are uh, heading to Antarctica. That's right. To uh, conduct some very interesting experiments with a very talented team uh, that includes other faculty plus some students. You have an undergraduate student and a postdoc student right. going with you as well. Now, you've been to Antarctica before. Yeah, I've been there five times actually, starting in 1980 my senior year of uh, my undergraduate career at, at Dartmouth College. And uh, actually that was the, the, yeah, that was the first time I went and actually that, I think that was actually the second uh, expedition into the Western Weddell Sea since Shackleton actually. Wow. And, um, and then I kind of left because I worked on sea ice uh, when I was an undergraduate. Um, it was a double major in math and physics at Dartmouth and then but uh, on the side I was working on sea ice, doing sea ice research. Um, looking at electromagnetic wave propagation and CIS, treating it as a composite material. Um, but the, uh, the ultimate goal was to use radar to try to measure its thickness, which is now very important because of the impact of climate change and global warming. Absolutely. And some of the things you're going to be doing down there are along those same lines as well. Yes, yes it is, actually. Uh, with a number of very interesting instruments that I know you've created yourself, actually. Yeah. Some uh, of them, yeah. Yes, yeah, so the idea is here is not only are you going to uh, conduct experiments, but you're actually creating the way these experiments will be conducted. So it's, it's very new. Right. You're doing something quite unique. Right. No, the, yeah, and even, actually, even last time, in 2007, um, that was the first time where, where I went down and, and, and had my own experimental program. And we sort of, on the fly, created some new experiments and did some of the first measurements like of, the, of extracting sea ice cores and directly measuring the vertical, the vertical con uh, component of the, of the electrical conductivity mm -hmm. of the ice. Um, although the reason that we started becoming interested in that is its relation to, to fluid flow through the ice. Um, and uh, because that's related to a lot of processes that are important in climate change studies. And let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, the science is very interesting, and it may be over a lot of people's heads, but basically the idea here is, is you want to understand the ice flow a little bit better. You want to understand that part of the world better, what it does relate to climate change, some of the things, hopefully prognostication, right. uh, looking into the future. Right. Ult ultimately, the kinds of work that we're doing is to be able to better predict uh, the future trajectory of the polar ice packs. In, uh, uh, um, in, in the context of climate change and how global warming is impacting our polar ice caps in the Arctic and the Antarctic. And um, one of the, uh, the processes that we're most interested in is fluid flow up and down through the ice. So sea ice is a composite material of pure ice with brine and air inclusions. And um, uh, f uh, fluid can actually flow, brine or seawater can actually flow up and down through the ice, such as um, in the Arctic, one of the most important um, uh, processes that is not so well understood or not well incorporated into these global climate models is um, the evolution of melt ponds. So when the ice is white, it uh, uh, reflects incoming solar radiation in the summertime, um, but when uh, the ice is gone or if there's melt ponds on the surface, that solar radiation gets absorbed. It sneaks in. It, exactly. And so, and in fact, that's actually one of the reasons why people are so concerned about the loss of the Arctic ice pack is because, well, instead of reflecting that incoming solar radiation, it's now being absorbed, which melts more ice, right. which then means more solar absorption, which melts more ice, and so on, in a positive feedback loop. And, um, but one of the key uh, parameters that goes into um, these climate models is the so-called albedo, or reflectance of the ice pack. And this is determined by the melt ponds that form on the surface, say, in, particularly in the Arctic. But the evolution of those ponds, whether or not they pool up or drain, is determined by how easy it is for fluid to flow up and down through, to, to drain through the ice. And that's determined by the porous microstructure of the ice. And that's what we develop mathematical models to understand. And, um, and that's actually one of the things that we're going down to Antarctica to look at is, um, is to try to get electromagnetic signatures of these critical um, uh, 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 characterizations of the porous microstructure of sea ice, which then determine its fluid transport properties. Okay, and so you're going to come back with some very interesting data, no doubt. Uh, maybe you, you, you don't really have any idea what that data is going to be, but what after your trip, what do you what do you do with that information? How, how do you uh, make it practical? Well, what we'll do is one of the things that we're interested in is um, taking, for example, taking electromagnetic data 
of, uh, of the sea ice, take, extracting cores and um, doing direct measurements of its electromagnetic properties, and then ultimately using mathematical models to relate that, that electromagnetic data to the fluid transport data. Um, and, but also while we're there, part of the reason why we're going now and the people we're going with is we have a colleague, Malcolm Ingham, in, um, in New Zealand, and also I have a very close colleague uh, who's involved in this project, who's the co-PI of this, of this grant, uh, Hayo Eichen at University of Alaska Fairbanks, who's intimately involved in this whole endeavor. And they actually will be, be having, they went down in, I think it was August, to, to freeze in um, uh, 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 electrode strings, which is for what is called cross-borehole tomography. In other words, while we're doing our direct measurements of the ice, where we can extract it and really see exactly what the properties of the ice are that we're working with, they have these strings that have been frozen into the ice, and they're essentially uh, going to be reconstructed through their measurements, reconstructing the electromagnetic properties of the ice in this little, basically a meter square, and then you know over the depth of over the depth of the ice, and so they'll be then reconstructing the. Um, uh, the, the electromagnetic properties of the ice in this box, and then through our direct measurements, we can then relate those electromagnetic measurements to the microstructural characteristics as a composite material, and then through our mathematical models, relate that then to the fluid transport properties, which are then related to the climate change, the pro, you know, climate processes, basically. You're excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty fun going to Antarctica. Well, I think it's got to be exciting, too, because, you know, like, like we said, this is kind of pioneering experimentation here. Yes. And not a lot of people have done it. In fact, in, in, in some respects, nobody has, has done it. No, that, that's right. That's right. And um, you're going down there for the first time to discover the way our Earth works. And that's, that's really kind of exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it'll be... Uh, uh, I'm very much looking forward to it, and I think it's you know it's exciting scientifically, and it's just and it's an adventure in itself. Now you'll be leaving mid-November, right? November fifteenth, we leave. You'll be gone how long? Um, we'll be gone just about a month, okay. a little you know a few days less than a month. And um, actually, in the past, in my pr previous five trips to the Antarctic, I've always been on icebreakers, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, twice with the U.S. and three times with the Australians, and that's like a you know uh, an icebreaking cruise ship in some sense. Right. You have nice. Um, a nice cabin, a shower, you know, great cooks, cooking great food for That's you. Not happen this then, then, no, this is a very <laughs> different situation. And actually, this will be my first time actually on the continent because we, we, so we fly to Christchurch, New Zealand, mm -hmm. and then depending on the weather, that's kind of the, one of the big unknowns about sure. the whole thing is we fly from Christchurch down to McMurdo, which is the big U.S. base, and then about, a, I guess, about a mile away is Scott Base, which is the New Zealand base, so we go there. And then we, at that point, we should pick up all our gear, our three massive crates that we shipped off about three weeks ago. And um, that was quite an endeavor in itself, yeah. was just basically uh, essentially uh, creating and buying an entire laboratory and then shipping it down to Antarctica. Eh, just slide but, it on the ice. Just, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> well, good luck. You have a great trip. And we're excited. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to talk to you when, we, when you get back. We'd love to find out what your findings are and Thank what you, you saw there. And, uh, uh, get a kind of a unique perspective on what uh, science really can do. Yep, for I'll look forward to talking with you then. Fantastic. Yeah, it's Ken good. Golden. He is a professor of mathematics and adjunct professor of bioengineering, and he's going to go get a very warm coat very soon and head <laughs> down to Antarctica with his team. Thanks for joining us uh, on uh, uh, FaceTime with you, and we'll be back hopefully with more with Ken and uh, with more of a lot here at the University of Utah. Take care.